Hello everybody, it's Ralph Hampel from ev3dev.org. Today I'm going to show you how I set up VirtualBox VMs with no intervention at all. Using a set of scripts that I've published at my GitHub site, I've made it easy for you to create virtual machines configured exactly the way you want. Let's get started by showing you where to find the scripts. Just go to my GitHub site at github.com slash rhampel. You'll find a few repos there. The one you're looking for is called Pixie Boot. If you want to use the scripts, the easiest thing to do is just download the most recent release from the releases area. You'll find instructions on what to do in the release notes, as well as a link to a detailed readme file. I'm going to show you what the folder looks like once everything's expanded. You can see the executable scripts at the top level and some directories that are specific to the supported distributions that we can install. All the Pixie Boot scripts take three parameters, some take four. The parameters are the distribution. Right now we support Debian and Ubuntu. Then there's the release. Each distribution has a unique release name, like Squeeze or Jesse for Debian, or Precise or Trusty for Ubuntu. Finally, there's the architecture, i386 or AMD64. These scripts were developed and tested mainly for EV3 dev development, so I'm going to run through the process for an Ubuntu Trusty AMD64 based virtual machine. The README file has all the detailed instructions on setting up your Pixie Boot folder structure. We'll use the Debian convention of using slash SRV to hold files and folders that are going to be served up locally. Within the Pixie Boot folder, there are five subfolders. The download folder is where the Pixie Boot scripts will store the network compatible installer. The ISO folder is where you need to put your downloaded ISO image for the distribution you want to install. The Pixie Boot TFTP and www folders are all created for you by the Pixie Boot scripts. Always check the README file in the Pixie Boot scripts folder. It's got the most up to date information. The first thing we need to do is run the Make Pixie Boot DIRS script. That's the one that sets up the folder structure that I showed you earlier. The Make Pixie Boot DIRS script only needs to be run once. Next, we'll run the Make Pixie Boot Installer script. This one's going to need the distribution, release, and architecture parameters. The script will download the NetBoot installer and extract it into the right place. I've speeded up the video here. You'll run the Pixie Boot installer script once for each distribution, release, and architecture. Once you've got the installer downloaded, the next step is to run Make Pixie Boot Scripts. Again, you'll need to supply the distribution, release, and architecture. This script customizes the PXE boot procedure to allow your virtual machine to grab the rest of the files it needs from your web server. We're almost there. There's only a few more steps to go. Now we're going to use the Make PXE Bootable VM script. This is the one that sets up a blank virtual machine. It creates a hard drive for us, sets up network adapters, and does all the busy work that we'd normally do with the GUI except it does it using a script where you can define exactly what that VM looks like. I'm going to assume you've already downloaded the ISO file for the distribution, release, and architecture that you want to install. The next step is to mount the ISO file, and of course, we've got a script to make that easy. Once the ISO file is mounted, we're one step away from being done. I'm going to assume that you've read the README file and that you have a local web server set up. The details are out of scope for this video. All we have to do now is run the final script, install PXE bootable VM. Normally this takes about four minutes on my i3 laptop with an SSD. I've speeded up the video here. You can see that there's not a single menu choice or key press that you have to perform. The machine installs itself. It even shuts itself down.
That's it, we're all done. Well, not quite. We have to start the machine, log in, and then run the post install scripts. Once that's done, the virtual machine is ready for use. Congratulations, you've just used the Pixie Boot scripts to make your life easier. Thank you.